Welcome to another episode of Quick Tech Tips and Reviews. My name is Tony, and with this channel, I try to bring you guys a variety of different tech-related content. So, if this is your first time with us, please consider subscribing to the channel and make sure you hit that little bell so that you're alerted to when I release new content. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can host multiple websites on a Synology NAS using multiple dynamic DNS names, or FQDNs for that matter, all pointing to the same external IP address. Okay guys, I'm signed into my Synology unit and I have the web station open. Now, if you missed last week's video, I showed how to host a website, a single website on a Synology NAS. We installed the web station, Apache server, and PHP. If you missed that video, I'll put a link to that up above here and down in the video description below. I suggest you watch that video before you watch this one because we're going to go now a step further and I'm going to show you how to run multiple websites using multiple uh, domain names, uh, all pointing to one external or public IP address. So that being said, we have everything installed and we learned that last week. So we're in our web station. Our status general settings and PHP settings all remain the same from last week. But now we're going to talk about virtual hosts because here's where all the magic begins. That's where all the magic takes place. That's how uh, the Synology knows which website to load off of which domain name, etc. So let's take a look at that. So the first thing in virtual hosts we're going to do is create our first virtual host. Now, that being said, I'm only going to show you how to do two websites in this video. And I have, I created ahead of time, two sample index pages right here, one for the first website and one for the second website so that you can see the difference when both load. And we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But for right now, for the first website, let's go to virtual host and click on create. And we're going to put our first host name in here. Now for me, I'm going to use one of my DDNS names. If you have an FQDN, you can put that here. So Okay, we're going to leave port 80 and 443 checked. We're going to come down to the bottom and we're going to select back end server is going to be Apache 2.4, which we installed last week as a supporting package and PHP, the default profile PHP 7. Now we're not done just yet. We've got to come over here and tell the virtual host where the document root is. So we're going to click on browse and we don't have one yet so we're going to click down on web and that was the original web folder that was created uh, by the web station last week but now we're just going to select that folder and inside that folder we want to create our folder for our first website so we're going to say create folder and i'm going to give it a name and i'm just going to call this um website one you can call this your domain name, whatever you want. I'm just going to call this website number one and say, okay. And now you can see that inside the web folder. Now we have another folder called website one. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that's selected and then go ahead and click select. And then we're going to go ahead and say, okay. Then we get a message to create this virtual host. The HTTP group requires read permission for this folder and its parent folders. Click OK to automatically update permissions and continue. So let's go ahead and click yes. OK, and now we've set up the virtual host for the first website. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing for the second website. So let's come up to create. And we're going to put in our other DNS uh, dynamic DNS name or your other FQDN here. Again, port uh, 80 and 443 stays uh, highlighted or uh, enabled in this case. We're going to come down to back end server. We're going to pick Apache server 2.4 and PHP profile 7. And now again, we have to give the virtual host a document root folder. So we're going to click on browse. And again, we're going to come down to that main web folder that was created last week in the initial setup. I'm going to click on create folder and just for the purposes of this video, I'm going to call this website two. 
I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now you see inside that web folder, we have a website one and a website two folder. Make sure you click on website two or whatever you named it and go ahead and say select. And you go ahead and say OK. OK, now you can see here that we have both our virtual hosts created. Now what I'm going to do, we're done here. Let's close this. Let's go into the file station. And let's go to our web folder. And you can see here website one and website two. Now here's the original index file uh, when we were just hosting a single site. But now for website one, I'm going to click on that folder. And I'm just going to come out here and I'm going to grab index one and drop it here so I can upload it. I'm just going to say skip. And now we have index one page loaded in for website one. And now I'm going to do the same thing for website two. I'm going to take index two and I'm going to upload it. And now I'm just because it has to be named index. I only named it index two because both pages were residing on my desktop. So what I'm going to do right here is quickly just rename that to index.html and say OK. And now we are done. So now with port forwarding set up from the last video, I should be able to reach both of these websites using the dynamic DNS names. Okay, guys. So I have my cell phone hooked up and let me just show you here. I do have Wi-Fi turned off as you can see. Let's go into Safari and let's try to bring up the first website. So and hopefully it'll load that first sample index page. I don't know if you can see that guys, but it says my first self-hosted website. Thank you for visiting. And let's go now and launch the second website. So let's enter the second dynamic DNS name. And there you go, guys. You can see now this one's in red and it says my second self-hosted website. Thank you for visiting. So guys, it's pretty, that's pretty much that simple. If you want to add more than two sites, yeah, obviously then you create additional virtual hosts in the web station. Remember though, you need to have either an FQDN pointed to a public IP address or a dynamic DNS name pointed to a public IP address. Then you have to have port forwarding set up in your router to point to the Synology uh, device. Now, if you want to see videos, I've done videos on setting up dynamic DNS. I'll put a link to that down in the video description below, as well as up above. Also, I'll, I did a video on how to port forward to an internal server. Again, I'll put the video link to that down below, as well as up in the uh, corner there. So there you have it, guys. If you liked this video, found it helpful, and would like to see more videos like this, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of my other videos up above. You can help out the channel by remembering to subscribe, give the video a like if you haven't already, and share the video. And remember to use those Amazon affiliate links down in the video description below. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, I thank you for watching. See you next time.